Hello, and welcome to this Gateway API tutorial. My name is Anas, and today I'll be showing you how to send an SMS message using PHP. So let's jump right into it. In order to follow this guide, all you need to have is some basic understanding of PHP and a Gateway API account. If you do not yet have a Gateway API account, you can go to gatewayapi.com and make one for free. You also need some credit to send your first SMS. If you do not have that yet, you can buy right here using the buy credit button. Or if you do not want to do that yet, you can contact our support using the button in the bottom right, and they'll be helpful with some free test credit so you can get started. Next thing we want to do is go to the first page when you log in here in the dashboard, scroll down a little bit, and you'll be presented with the coding examples. Select the PHP example, copy it and put it into an editor of your choice. Now go to the editor of your choice for when you're writing PHP. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but it doesn't really matter, just use whatever you're comfortable with. So now just paste in the code to your editor and it will look something like this. Now I'll go through every step of the code because I find that it's more useful to know what the code does in order to modify it for your particular use case. If you're not interested in, in that and you think it all is pretty self-explanatory, you can skip forward a little bit to when I actually send the message. But yes, so first line, we're just starting up our PHP uh, file as usual. On the third line here, where it says URL, we have a variable that's set to our endpoint that is used for sending SMS messages. You do not want to change this at all. On the fourth line, you have your API token. That's what's used to identify who you are to our server, so we know which account um, the request is coming from. Down here, we have the specifics of the content of the message itself. First off, we have the recipients, which are the phone numbers that this message is going to be sent to. So these are just some test numbers that are set in. Uh, you can put in up to 10,000 different recipients here, but I'm just going to send it to my own number. I suggest you do the same, send it to a friend or a colleague. And first you want to put in your country code without any leading zeros or pluses. My phone is Danish, so I use 45. You just use your own country code. You can look it up if you don't know what it is. Then you put in your number, and there you have it. Now, on the next line, we have a JSON object, which is the object that will send to our server um, with information detailing how this mess is going to be sent. So first off, we have sender. This is the send ID that will appear on the message on your phone. Uh, so for example, if you get an SMS from your bank, well, your bank's name will often be the sender. The default here is example SMS. I'm just gonna put in my own name. Message is of course the message, uh, the content of the message in your SMS. I'll just say, hi, this is my first message from Gateway API. Yeah, and uh, do note that if you want to send emojis or special characters, uh, you can't do this per default, but you can see in our documentation how to do that. And now the recipients is left empty for now. Uh, on the next line, we'll be filling this out, but we're just initializing an array here. So down here, we have a for loop, and what this for loop does is it takes every recipient and it puts it into our recipients array and it uh, makes it so it says that the MSISDN equals the number. And the reason we have to go through this is that you can also put in tag values um, in this recipients array, but 
for this basic example, we only use want to use numbers, but we still have to follow this convention of saying MSISDN equals the phone number. And MSISDN is just a fancy way of saying phone number. So now we have our JSON object ready to send to the server. And by the way, if you don't know what JSON is, it's just a simple way of um, sending information, pairing it up. Next up, we want to make our request object. We use the built-in curl library to do that. So first off, we initiate our curl object here using curl initiate, and it will be saved at ch. Once we have the curl object, we're going to set some options using the curl set opt method. And in all of these, you'll see the first parameter we set is ch, because we want it to be related to our ch instance. Then we set the URL, which is where the request will be sent to. And that will be the URL we defined early on, which is the endpoint used for taking in messages. Then we set the HTTP header and we set it to JSON. That way the server knows that it's a JSON object that is coming along. Then the user password, um, this option usually takes a, first it takes a, um, a username and then the password and it takes username, colon, password. But since our authentication is just using a token, we just have the token as the username and we don't have a password. But in order to comply with curl option, we still have to uh, put in the colon here. So that's why it says API token and the dot, which is concatenation of a string, colon. And then we just leave the password field empty. Down here, we, uh, we tell it that it is posting the JSON object and it's encoding it as JSON using JSON encode. And return transfer, well, we just tell it that we want to know what which response it gets from the server. And down here, we define the result variable and the result variable is equal to curl exec execute ch. And curl exec ch is gonna, as the name implies, execute this curl object that we've made here. And it's gonna use all the options and then it's gonna make the HTTP request. The response from this HTTP request is gonna be saved in the result object. Then our next line, we use curl close to, because we're done with the curl object, we're not gonna make any more HTTP requests using the object. Then we're going to print result, so you can see what the server response was. And then down here on the last two lines, we do some JSON decoding. And this is just to show you how, in case you haven't worked with JSON before, show you how to unpack uh, the JSON object that is the response. And then we also print that object. And we just choose to print the IDs. Uh, but there are other things in JSON object. You can look at this yourself and see if there's anything you want to say for your particular application. So now that our PHP script is ready, the next thing we want to do is execute it. You can execute this script however you like. I like to do it using my terminal, so I'm going to go through how to do it there. First, I want to navigate to your folder that contains the file. You can see here, I got my smh.php file. Got executed. Boom. And as you see here, the file has been executed and you should receive a message on your phone. And it will look like this screenshot you can see here on the screen. And the information you get back is first off, we have the result here. IDs tells you the message ID of the message you just sent, which is used in our system, and you can use it yourself to reference it if you need some support or anything like that. Usage lets you know the amount of messages you sent and in which countries. You see, he has sent one message in Denmark. Currency 
my account is set to Danish krona. But if your account is set to euro, it will say euro here. And then it says the cost. And you can see here, it cost me 0.145 krona. Down here, we have the print from the JSON object. And you can see here, well, it's showing us that object uh, index zero in our array is of uh, message IDs is this number. Next up, I'll show you some common annoyances when trying to send SMS messages. First of all, the sender field does have some restrictions. Make sure not to use any special characters such as symbols or characters specific to your language, as those will often result in the message failing to send, the send ID be being overwritten or showing up weirdly on the recipient's phone. Furthermore, there is a character limit of 11 characters uh, for the send ID, so make sure to keep it at that or lower. For the message field, if you wish to send links in your message, you have to go through the whitelisting process on your profile. This can be done from your Gateway API profile by pressing on Settings, URL Whitelist, Add URLs, typing in your URLs, what you need them for, and then in a day or even less time, our support will have gone through your link and will approve or disallow the link. Another thing to note in your message is that making a new line cannot be done in with the traditional new line character like this, or for Windows users, sorry, like this. This will just send the characters and will not cause a actual new line to be made. If you want a new line in your message, you can just make it like you usually would, and it would uh, will be sent along. I find that to be a bit annoying, especially in editors that add automatic line space in the side like here, as this will also uh, be in the message. So what I like to do when sending an SMS message through PHP is making a variable, just call it new line. And I'll say that this is what new line is. And then if I want to use it, I'll just concatenate it to my message string, like so. This will make it so there is a new line in the message. Whichever method you prefer to use is fine. Both work quite well. And a final thing to look out for is to make sure that the encoding of your SMS or your PHP file is set to UTF-8. For most systems, like for the majority, this will be uh, the default and it will be there automatically. But for some Windows users, your PHP script might be set to a different encoding. I will not go through how to change the encoding of a PHP script in this video, but you can search that out online as there are plenty of guides that will tell you how to do so. Should you still experience any problems with sending messages through PHP, feel free to contact our support and we will be helpful um, with your inquiries. If you want more advanced features um, for your SMS sending needs, feel free to look at our documentation where we outline all the different features uh, of Gateway API. What I've showed you today is just the simple basics of how to send an SMS message, but Gateway API has a lot more to offer and you can read about all about it here in our documentation. Should you need any personal support after this, feel free to leave a comment to this video and we'll try to help. You can also contact our support like this and um, our support team will be helpful. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions for things you want the gatewayapi.com YouTube channel to cover, feel free to leave suggestions down below and we'll try and get to it. And if you want to keep up to date with the new features, new guides that we put out, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you'll stay in the loop. Bye.